Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Rodgon. I am your teacher today. I'm going to be your art teacher for the next hour or so. So, hello. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing good. So, let's recap a little bit about what we did yesterday. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Let's talk a little bit about that. So yesterday we talked a little bit about heads and ears and everything like that. Actually, that was our second stream. In our first stream, we talked about facial expressions and we talked about bodies and we talked about all this sort of stuff. Now, why is my internet not connecting? Huh. Interesting. We'll figure it out. I, I got the new hotspot like tagged in so it works on my phone but it's not working on my computer so i don't like that <laughs> anyways good morning how are you guys doing so boom, ba -doo, ba -doo. today i figured that i would teach you guys a little bit about the spacing of the face teaching you guys a little bit about how to find your features and how to start distinguishing where things go so that you guys can start learning a little bit more of the structures and you guys can start playing around with different shapes, different styles, different things that you guys want to create. How about that? If that sounds like a good lesson, please make sure to let me know by clicking the little heart button and sharing the stream. As we continue on, I will be asking you guys to be a little bit more proactive when it comes down to helping me grow because that's the only way that I'm going to be able to get there. I'm also going to be streaming a little bit after on YouTube. So I'm going to be doing two streams from now on. I'm going to be doing a TikTok stream and I'm going to be doing a YouTube stream. Uh, the YouTube stream is going to be for the people that want to be a little bit more dedicated and the want to actually help donate and stuff like that. So I'm just adding that because yesterday I went on and I just got like $50 in donations and like it was like no time at all. So I was like, holy shit. Okay. Well, I have to go to where uh, the situation calls for, right? We all have to adapt as artists. So I'm going to start doing it there, see how that works out. And if it does work nicely, I'm going to transition to YouTube a little bit more, mostly because I'm scared of the TikTok ban. I'm terrified of it just being banned and then I'm losing all my audience. So I need to transition to a different audience in order to be able to secure the, the future of my channel. So it's just a necessity thing, unfortunately. So let's talk a little bit about heads. Okay. Some of the hardest parts to learn to draw from the head is the spacing in between the ear and the eyebrows or the cheekbones or the jaw or the placement of the ears or where your eyes go or how long your nose is or how the jaw structure works. So all that stuff is normally incredibly a pain in the ass. Okay, it's normally a pain in the ass because it's very complicated shapes. Incredibly complicated shapes that we're trying to like simplify to the point of a circle or a, a box, right? So a lot of these things can't be seen that simply because it's a very complex shape, right? You can, I can tell you how to draw a head all I want if I do this. That just gives you the general shape of it, but it's not telling you where anything goes. If you understand that your face features are mostly in the front of your face, right? Think of all this thing as an entire uh, shape. About half the way up, you're going to have your jaw. That is going to give you your ear. So your jaw and your ear are pretty much connected. The bottom of your ear goes around and connects boop, to the other ear. Okay? The bottom of the ear goes around the back of the skull and connects to the other ear. So learning how to draw little circles inside your shapes is very important. Now, from there, this ear gives us about half of the cranium. So any space that I draw back here, if I just draw that to the front, I have myself the perfect placement for my temple. 
And my temple is going to be around the top of my ear. And it's going to be where my eyebrow sits. The temple starts where the eyebrow ends. So wherever that ends, that's where the round stuff happens. If you draw an eyebrow, it doesn't matter where you draw it. That is the side of your face now. Okay? So that is a very interesting little mapping point that is very good to understand. Halfway from the eye, halfway from where you decide this, put your ear towards the back, always pointing towards the back, like covering a little bit of the back space. Okay? That little dimple that you get right here, that is going to be an indicator for the middle of your eyeball. So when you're drawing a head, okay, if we want to draw an eyeball and we draw the eye and we don't know where to put the nose, well, right there is where your eyebrows and your nose converge, generating a very little tiny V. Okay, that little index that you see in a bunch of drawings, right? That little indent is this from the side. <laughs> and I'll show you guys that in a second because we are just, we'll transition to that. So that is the nose bridge. The nose comes out of your skull and then it comes back into your nose canal. So if you know how to draw your nose canal, you know how to draw a nose really easy. You draw your eye socket, and you draw a triangle, a triangle. At the edge of this eye socket, you can draw the temple that goes to the side of the face, and that's where it stops being round and it starts being flat. From this little triangle, just draw the lines going down the triangle, and you're going to get your teeth. Okay? From there, from the top of this triangle... Draw a dot anywhere you want your nose tip to be. And then connect the edges. Your lips also come out over your teeth. So if you have your teeth right here, your mouth comes around your teeth. Around them. It always goes around them. That's why this is a complicated body part. Because you end up having to draw a lot through your shapes and very subtle curvatures. So that is normally very difficult. But if you start seeing it this way, then it becomes a little bit easier. Now, we're going to go into a page and a half of faces. So we're going to do a whole page and a half. Now, if you guys want to stay for the lesson, all I need from you guys is some help, okay? Yesterday, we got to 100,000 likes. Yesterday, we got to 100,000 likes. We can totally destroy that. We can totally destroy that today. But I'm going to leave that up to you guys. I'm going to leave that to my mods to maybe like, you know, let people know once in a while. Uh, mostly, I don't want to have to do it all the time. It annoys me and it breaks the, like, the continuation of the lesson. But if I can have some dedicated people that want to help me out to remind people to come subscribe to my YouTube, to come buy my books and stuff like that. If you guys want to do that, fantastic. If you guys want to leave a good review so that other people want to buy that stuff, fantastic. That's how you guys can help. Okay, that is, that is the biggest help that you guys can provide. Point people to my channel. And that involves just letting people know that, you know, I'm here. Remind them to help. Remind them to subscribe. Stuff like that. Okay? So, ooh, 100 face challenge, huh? Oh, my. God. I want to do that, but I want to make it a competition. Like, I want to make it a competition, especially since people like me that are incredibly fast, right? Like, I want to have people of my caliber of uh, art to compete against each other so that we can innovate. Because competition is always going to innovate things. So if I learn how to draw a face really quickly, right, uh, my opponent is probably going to learn to draw that face quicker than me just because they need to, because that is what competition thrives on. So... That might be something that I look into for later on. 
And I'll just、uh, challenge people to draw like 50 faces or something like that. Whoever can finish quickest. And then we'll have like random emotions. So we have to draw based on emotions. So it's like anger, frustration, constipation. And then we have a panel of judges that judge if we actually landed those faces. And if we did land those faces, then we get a point. And that way you keep it nice and fair and it's more consistent and not just a popularity contest, which is the one thing that I absolutely hated about most of the competitions that I'm in. It's never about the art, it's about how popular you are. And unfortunately, yeah, I do win some of those because I am quite popular. But it's not the way that I want to win any competition and it's not how it should be. You know, it should not be based on that. It should be based on the artwork and the quality of the thing. So I want to be the impartial judge on these competitions. I will be the main boss, but I'll be the impartial judge. Like, kind of like, like Master Chef. Imagine Master Chef, but Master Artist. Today, we will challenge our painting master. Bah, bah, bah. And then we bring out like a painting dude, and he's like, and he is being challenged by our competitor from. San Jose, California. It is Maria. Maria. And then you just like have like this over the top dude, like that, like, so like Master Chef guy that's like super intense, like, and fight. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. I always thought of something like、uh, Ink Masters, like Ink Masters, but having it be like an actual art competition. <laughs> And no shade on the people from Ink Masters, but I laugh at your guys' work sometimes. Like, I, I, this is my guilty pleasure. That,、uh, I'm a very nice human being until I have to be like, hey, 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 <laughs> why can't you draw a leg? <laughs> They drew the wrong leg. <laughs> And then it, that just makes me die inside. It makes me so happy. Like, your guys' i s、uh, the people from that show, your guys' failures make me smile, dude. It, it like, it, I don't know why. I don't know. It, I think it's because you guys are so cocky. I think that, that because they're so incredibly cocky, right? They're incredibly, like, annoyingly cocky. And they have no basis for it. Absolutely no basis for it. If you can't draw a pinup, if you go, like, composition, and then you go, oh my God. Composition, what? And you're like, are you kidding? Like, you're, you're, you're calling yourself a master at something. Like, what the fuck? Like, you need to like, really like, reevaluate what the word master means if you're, com- you're surprised at every little tiny word that's thrown your way that's not normal. Oh my God, contrast, what? <laughs> Uh, I don't like Japanese. I don't like traditional. I only do neo traditional. Like, you draw cartoons. Okay? Your, your, your term of、uh, wanting to call it something else, it's, it's, it's not. It's an illustration of a cartoon. <laughs> your neo traditional like, call out is just you trying to make it sound fancier. <laughs> Colorful cartoons. Cool. Traditional? Badly drawn cartoons by old sailors. Try to replicate that look.、Um, because they were supposed to be simple tattoos, right? Like, so the pinups have like ridiculously like horrible hands, and then they're like all like wonky, and they have like one eye bigger than the other. And it's so weird, man. Like, it, it's so weird. Like, I don't understand why people like that style, but you know, everybody has their own like take on things. You know, everybody has the right to be right. <laughs> yeah. All right. You, you enjoy your style. You, you right there. I see you with my big eye. <laughs> Ta da. Pinky. <laughs> All right. Non proportional. Like, no, no. That's just cartoon, dude. Like, Non proportional. Like, you, you're trying to say like all these terms to make it seem like it's a, a more like cool thing. You're drawing cartoons, you're drawing TV characters, you're drawing silly, like, you know, like car- caricatures more than anything. Like, between caricatures and、uh, graffiti, like, that's literally it. 
and that's they you guys try to call it your own thing and it's like no it's not it's something that's been around for a very long time guys just go look at any graffiti wall by anybody that was inspired by like spongebob <laughs> can you see our comments yeah, i can see your comments i just don't look at the phone too much because i'm not really drawing that's not really pin up to be honest though what is this oh dude like oh you want a pin up you, you want a pin up oh man you, people always like say silly things like i know it's like meant to be like something like they're trying to pose their opinion and stuff but you know understanding that you're dealing with someone that draws every single day dude like i can draw and replicate most stylings that are out there mostly because it's not not it's because it's not science it's not magic everything is just logic a little bit of visualization and a shit ton of work a lot of studying okay but if you do that and you just practice the things you really need to drawing characters does not become super hard Eventually, you'll get to the point where you're going to be able to draw things that you never thought that you could. And eventually, you'll be way better than you ever imagined that you would possibly be able to be. But you need to allow yourself to understand that, you know, that's going to take time. And no tips, no little uh, hints or uh, like anatomy video is going to get you there if you don't really take the time to study and sit down on your own and try to make sense of all this shit. Okay? Art is hard. <laughs> Art is not easy. It is not. And everybody covets it. Everybody. So... Having it be a field that everybody wants to be a part of, but not everybody gets to be a part of, is a very frustrating thing. Because we're always told that everybody gets to be an artist. Yeah, you get to be an artist, but you don't get to do it professionally. Not everybody does. You got to work your ass off to get there. Just like a professional lawyer, you know, you can argue all you want for like for debate and for fun with your girlfriends and shit. But at the end of the day, if you're going to do it professionally, it takes another level of commitment to that. And that is the one thing that a lot of people don't understand. If you want to get better, you need to really want it. Because it's going to take unlearning a lot of stuff. It's going to take relearning a lot of stuff. And it's going to take a lot of realizing you don't know shit. <laughs> that, is, that is the one thing that was more prevalent to me. It's like when I realized that since I wasn't practicing my foundations for a very long time, I was just drawing based on style for years and years and years. And I never improved because I was just refining those bad habits. And the moment that I went back and I was like, I can't draw a fucking circle. Oh, my God. I can't draw a circle. Ah! And I was just like, okay, cool. We're restarting over. Like, like let's, see what, let's see what 20 years of experience does to a learning curve, right? And, yeah, it absolutely fucking demolished it. Like, Within six months, I was drawing better than I had ever been in my life just by going back to previous lessons of just basics, basics, like shapes, like straight up shapes, like just learning how to draw a circle properly. That was something that I didn't know that I needed to refine. Being accurate with your lines and being able to touch the edges of circles and keep them round or oval depending on what you need, controlling it without having to do a shit ton of lines is very important because then drawing circles inside of circles gives you depth. Drawing circles inside of circles of different widths gives you a sphere. And those things give you like a globe 
All these individual little parts can be things that stick out. They could be mapping points. They could be anything that we want to use that for. But without having this information and knowledge and ability to see it like that, man, this unlocked everything. Just realizing that I, when I step back after t- almost 15 years of my career, I stepped back to just do the basics again. And within six months, I was drawing better than I had ever drawn before. More confident. I was more like ready to just go at it. And now it's to the point where I can draw absolutely anything I want. It just doesn't make, it's not hard for me anymore. And it's not being cocky. It's literally just the synergy of all your knowledge that accumulates and then just gets there. So our goal, remember, our goal is to get to 100K. So if you guys are learning anything, please make sure to hit that little heart button a couple times. Share the stream if you guys feel so inclined to go above and beyond. Sharing the stream with any of the people that are might be interested in learning from me. That's a fantastic way to help me grow. And I do have books for sale. So if you guys feel like getting something cool with my sketchbook, like sketches or reference material, because I sell reference material in the form of my art block books and my pinup book. So if you guys want to draw, want to see really cute ladies, go buy my pinup book. It's 100 pages of literally jam-packed. Like my sketchbooks are like this, dude. Like all my sketchbooks are just like packed to the bone. (laughs) You know, everything is packed to the bone completely. Let me show you guys one. The pinup one is based on this one. So the pinup one is based on a whole lot of ladies. <laughs> right? A bunch of ladies. Like, I fill every inch of this with everything. And these all started from random blobbies. So you would see. Hold on. Let me see if I have one. Where's my random blobby example? Here you go. So I make blobbies with watercolor, and then I just start drawing features. And then eventually, you end up drawing a lot of cool stuff. And it's random, and it's silly, and it took me like an entire year to finish this book because I just kept on going back in and drawing more and more and more and more and more. And this book is for sale. This is for sale, edited and revised and completely so much better because it has a lot of digital pinups too. So feel free to go buy that if you guys have not. I'm going to be pushing for it to be on Amazon so you guys can get it printed as well. Uh, I don't know why it just like never really happened. I just kind of forgot about it. And since I was like, I'll do it later, I never got back to it. Amazing. You're spot on about e-learning and learning. Yeah, I'm a writer. Your feedback is spot on. Yeah. Like that, I, I found that out through my friend Wes too, that he's a programmer. So he's a programmer. He told me that he teaches people the same way that I teach people how to draw. And I was like, ha ha. Yep. That is just, uh, it's a very easy and fun, interesting way to help people like comprehend how things work. And that can apply to other aspects of your life as well. Are the ebooks? Yeah, there's actually a bundle for the ebooks. So if you guys get all the ebooks, uh, I have them all bundled up for like thirty bucks or something like that. Something like that. I don't know. I forget how much it is, but it's uh yeah, it's like four books, and you guys can. I highly suggest that you guys use them for references. Like, there's thousands of sketches in there, so having thousands of drawings at your disposal means that you can just flip to a random page and use one for a sketch if you're feeling like you're art blocked. Thus, the name art block. The eyebrow dictates where the side of my face is. So I have my side of my face right here somewhere. The styling can change depending on what you need from your character. So it doesn't have to stick to a certain little look. You can make this bigger to get a different style, different look. You can get different species by different, they can make like a xenomorph, yeah, a helmet, stuff like that. 
very easily by just understanding the flow of your body, right? And that happens by knowing landmarks. If you know landmarks, then you're going to be able to do that a lot more effectively. And in this case, the landmark is the eyebrow. Wherever the eyebrow lands, that is going to be the side of the face, which leads to our cheekbones, to our chin. So from your eyebrows, you can dictate the rest of the face really quickly if you know what you're looking for. <laughs> Could you show your art before you started learning the basics? Uh, yeah. I mean... Look, a lot of people think that they have to wait till they're ready to be able to uh, show their art, to be able to show off, to be able to like demonstrate what they can do. You're ready now. It's just your level of confidence. It's really it. Like your level of confidence is just keeping you from your potential, right? If you are afraid which is fine to be afraid. Being afraid is perfectly normal. It's just a normal reaction from humans, right? We are afraid of the unknown, and therefore we have to learn to deal with that feeling. That feeling is really, really bothersome sometimes. But, you know, once you get past that, like, initial stage of uh, terrifying fright, you realize that it's not as bad as you thought. <laughs> and you get a lot of more positive feedback than you ever do to get negative feedback. So you'll always be having encouraging people. The ear is off right here. The ear has to be a little higher. So I'm going to make a note. Ear height. Correct it immediately so that I don't make that same mistake in the future if I can help Okay. But can you show your old art? Oh, you guys want to see an old, old, old sketchbook? Sure. Let me show you guys an old, old, old sketchbook. I feel generous with sharing today. Uh, let's see. This one is from, let's see. Rodgon sketchbook. Uh, this one has to be from like 2002. 2006, <laughs> boobies. Now, kinky, <laughs> kinky sex looks like the world go around. One week, one book, no problem. Just remember, you're reading this, you should be drawing. So this is my buddy, Jerry. So my buddy, Jerry, used to encourage me to do one week sketchbooks. So I had one week to fill this entire sketchbook up. Let's see how I did. We start off strong, day one. Look at this, man. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. I just drew lumps. I didn't even know how to overlap things. I just drew lumps. The proportions, everything is silly. But this is one is always easy. I love the idea behind the one week sketchbook. I'm always hyped up and know my boy Jerry is as well. Laura is also going to join. And hopefully this will be a tradition that we can hold and cherish for as long as we know each other. Aw, I'm going to love and hate this so much. <laughs> All right, so we did some life drawing, and obviously I was not drawing on both sides of the page at this point. This page is weak. Boo! You call this the first page, loser? <laughs> and then it got just, it just, okay. I don't really have reference for Hellboy, but I bet he would look like this if he had this that Down syndrome. Probably. Um, this is later. This was added later. <laughs> I fixed that later. Uh, anime is in some style I draw all the time. It's cool and all, but uh, to tell you the truth, all the same. My guilty pleasure is, and of course to say, Inuyasha. And it's really not so bad as people say. Oh my god, I'm so, f such a weeb. Yay, Wizard of Oz. I remember doing this one. That was funny. Uh, day two. I only got... Five pages done yesterday, but it's okay. I'll make up for it today. Ten pages is my goal. Sadly, I'm drawing blank. Bit, I'll get over it, and then bam! And then we drew some snowmen because we looked at some Calvin and Hobbes. This is reference from Calvin and Hobbes, just the posing. 
Back then, I didn't know how to draw trees. Nowadays, I can draw trees really cool. Trees became something that I focused on a lot because I was absolutely horrendous at them. And I wanted to be at the level of Bill Watterson at one point in my life. One day, I will be known for my cool landscape paintings with hot girls and silly animals. And that is something that I hope happens at one point in my life. I, I get recognized by one of those things, either by my ability to draw women, my ability to draw pinups, my ability to draw cute, silly animals, or my ability to just tell stories. I could also be a tattoo artist. Yay! <laughs> my attempts at caricatures from Kung Fu Hustle. Some graphic design. <laughs> Didn't I say I could be a tattoo artist? Uh, I know that something in my head isn't right. <laughs> but to be quite frank, I'm okay with that. <laughs> what? Hate speech? What hate speech? Eh. Oh, well. Sorry, TikTok. In the hate of Mickey on my side, finished day. What a difference from yesterday. So I started feeling a little bit more confident, I guess. What makes the world go round? No, it's money. It's not minorities. Damn, right? Because we were playing Magic the Gathering. This is my friend Steve. That's me. And that was my friend Jerry. <laughs> I was trying to be a philosopher. <laughs> I was trying to be so deep with all the things that I used to draw. I, draw, I didn't know how to draw hoodies. Um, somehow people realized it was time to set the killer whales free. <laughs> A lot of this is reference art for my, from Pinterest. Why I feel lazy. Steve and Jerry came over today. We had fun. Now to work. Blah. Barely started. It's 10 p.m. And then I made Magic the Gathering cards for us. Oh, I forgot about that. And that was my attempt at a pinup. And that was my attempt at the Haposai from Ron Mahath. And then some more Pinterest drawings. I didn't know how to draw hair, so I just drew little shapes. And then my attempt at women, and I had no idea how to draw hands. So I would just draw shapes like that. And then, as you guys can see, my shape of my hands are very consistently just spatulous. I tried to do this reverse drawing thing, and it was kind of hard, but my friend Jerry was amazing at it. And as we went through, you start seeing a little bit more improvement towards the end. You start seeing a little bit more freedom, a little bit more uh, penmanship work, a little bit more refinement. And that comes from actually playing around with your things so much. Right? You start playing with your penmanship so much with your utensils that you just get comfortable and you start pushing the envelope. And I seem to have almost succeeded. I didn't quite succeed in this one. And I didn't quite finish it. But that one was one from uh, a long time ago. That, that was a long time ago. And now we know how to draw everything a lot better. So our journey has taken us through a lot of places, right? Uh, I have gone and through like the whole like, ooh, I have to have one style. I have to learn everything. I am not ready. I'm ready for everything. And just everything in between has been uh, the stuff that I've lived through. And that's, I think, why so many people think I'm just a relatable person to be following because the struggles you guys are going for, yeah, I have either lived it or I am going through it. <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's fun to see other people suffer with you. <laughs> the side of the eyebrow equals the side of the face. This equals half of the rest of my head. So whatever distance I have here, I set here, and I have the side of my face. Uh, the height of my head depends on how much height I want to give. My head can normally be split into three parts. So if I have these two being relatively the same, I'm going to want the head to be relatively the same. So I just match that to that, and then I have a perfectly 
um, not like some, not perfectly realistic face, but a perfectly structured face that you can use to be able to draw things. It's fun to see other people suffer with you. <laughs> Uh, those flowers are cute. Thank you. I want to teach art because I love art and helping kids grow, but I don't know if it's worth the stress. Why is it stressful for you? See, see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that right from the get-go, right now, from the get-go. I have never felt stressed teaching art. Ever, ever in my life. I have never. I've taught everything from kindergarten to tutelage in college. Right? I haven't been a professor yet because they won't give me professor status because I don't have a master's. But I have taught pretty much every single uh, age group because I've wanted to see where I wanted to end up. So from after school programs for like kindergarten kids to like, you know, like after school programs for like young adults to middle school. I will never teach middle school again. Middle school would is the, the the era where they don't really know what they want and they're just learning that they have to mind themselves or they're going to die. You know, th that that's where they learn their manners. They're like, "Okay, cool. You just pushed the wrong person." All right. Now it's scary. You know, it's like, "Oh, yeah, I had a kid spit in my face one time." Like he had no concept of danger. <laughs> I guess he just uh, assumed that a big, scary dude that had a mustache wouldn't do anything. And I just straight up was like, I just got really, really close to his face. I was like, you want to do that again? And he just like, ah! and I was like, yeah, of course, dude, like learn that consequences happen if you do that. And that's when they start learning that. So I don't like to be a part of that process. Part of that process is just not going to happen. Never again. High school, very disrespectful sometimes, but you also get very dedicated people. But that's still when they're transitioning to either taking it seriously or not doing uh, much with it. And, but college, college, you're paying for that education. So if you don't pay attention, then you're just missing out on money. So it, that's why I want to be there. There's a consequence to not listening. <laughs> I've grown up being good at art, but never been able to pick a topic to them draw. How do I even start this sketching? Ooh, start with a circle. So if you want to start, if you want to start, if you've never drawn before and you're joining us right now, draw a circle. Okay. Get good at drawing circles. And then if you draw a couple circles, you can do things like eyes. If you just draw four circles, you can draw eyes. If you draw four circles and one overlapping line, you can have eyes that have an, a really cool quality, like an expressive quality. You can do this with ovals and make them look a little thinner and do the same thing. Any line, any circle that has a nice little dark line on top is going to give you a nice, cute eye. Okay? Now, what you can do with that knowledge, if you've never drawn before, is now that you can draw an eye, draw two eyes on another circle. So it's one circle, two circles, three circles, four circles, five circles, and then you draw an oval for your mouth. Draw another oval for your eyebrows, and draw a little line at the bottom of your eyes pew, pew, as your nose. You have now the ability to draw a really simple cartoon character by drawing a few circles and some ovals. As you get better, as you get more into the whole concept of drawing, you'll want to progress from that. But drawing those circles help you draw circles inside of a circle, and then you can use that as a guideline. Right? Now you can draw things looking up, looking down, and you can control it. So that is the one thing that you can start with this. Learn to draw really cute eyes so that you can feel happy about learning how to draw something cool really fast. A dark line, an intersecting thinner line also gives you an eyeball. 
So thick line intersecting thin line gives you an eyeball. Okay? Or round shape, dark line on top in a couple circles can give you all the way to Pixar eyes. Changing the angle slightly will change it drastically. It can give you slightly more several eyes, and eventually you can draw ovals that are angled, and you can draw more seductive eyes. This is, again, just this line, a thick line, intersected by a thin line, and then you add the styling of your eyelash. So it's very easy to draw that in every way. Do you need to draw a droopy, like doe eyes? Just draw the line going down. And when you're drawing that on the face, it's not much harder. You go line, you match the point right there, you match the one on the side, and then you go curvy line. Curvy line inside, curvy line inside. So when you start thinking about it a little bit simpler, you're going to start seeing a lot more improvement in your art. When you stop thinking, oh, it has to be an oval, and it has to be this, and it has to be that. No, it's literally just one curvy line, <laughs> an intersecting curvy line. Overlap the top one so that you have a little bit on both sides. You can choose any of these overlaps to draw eyelashes. And you can also do little teardrops into the bottom eyelid, into the top eyelid, into eyebrows. It really does build you up into a situation where you're not going to be wondering how to draw an eye. And this is essentially this, an eyeball, and you're just drawing around it. That's your curvy line. And your second curvy line is your second eyeball, okay? So when you have your eyeball, your eyelid is just curvy line number one, curvy line number two, the top one overlaps, and you draw whatever styling you want. And that repeats on the other side, but the nose is going to be covering a little bit. Okay. That's the only thing that happens. What did somebody told you it had to be perfect? What's perfect? I would ask you for an example of what perfect is so that I could replicate your understanding of perfection. There is no perfect art. That is, the, that is the beauty of, and the kind of the hindrance and the beauty of art. It's like that there's nothing that quantifies a perfect piece of art. So if you can show me what a perfect piece of art is, I will gladly, gladly try to replicate that. Do you have a Twitter? No, you can see my art on my Instagram. You can see it at rodgon.com. That's another place you guys can go. That's where my finished artwork is. If you guys go there, you guys can ask and submit like, if you guys want like a personal commission, I think I have like links there. Uh, yeah, I don't really, what's my Insta? My Insta is in my link in my bio. So if you guys want to, you guys can follow me there. Uh, Towards the end of this stream, let's try to hit as many likes as you want. My art teacher told me not to go to college because I wouldn't make it. Hey, maybe he is projecting onto you what happened to him. Yeah. Uh, a lot of teachers, unfortunately, uh, they don't really know how to teach beyond their capabilities. And, you know, his saying that uh, it's very unfortunate that you are stuck having to follow somebody that is uh, unable to see your potential. Uh, but on top of that, it's uh, 
it's kind of insulting, isn't it? You know, like, it's kind of insulting himself. Like, he's a teacher. He should be giving you the guidance to how to get to that level. He should be the one to tell you, like, okay, well, it's going to be hard, but how do I get you there? Right? How badly do you want it? And if you really want it, let's get you there. That, that's, that's what a good teacher does. Okay? They explain to you the consequences of you following up with what you want to do. And then if you really still want to, then they help you get there. And that's how you know the difference between a person that's looking to help you and somebody that's just covering a job. How do you do lighting and shading? You got to stop spamming right now. That is one thing that I absolutely abhor, dude. Like it annoys the living hell out of me that people spam the shit out of things. I'm qu- I'm not answering your question because it doesn't follow line to what we're teaching, right? You're just asking something completely different to what I'm teaching right now. So if I'm doing that and you're throwing off the complete theme of the whole uh, class, uh, why am I going to listen to you? No, 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 no. They, like, I don't want them to be muted. I want them to be able to ask questions. I'm not an asshole. I just want them to understand why I'm not answering their questions. So I don't want to exclude anybody from knowledge. No, no, they're clearly here and they're wanting to learn. But wait until there's a theme based on what you want to learn. If you want more personalized knowledge, I do offer classes and individualized uh, meetings and stuff like that. If you want personal tutelage, perfectly. Just message me. But if you are wanting to be part of our lessons, be considerate of the fact that we are teaching a certain lesson with a certain topic. And if it's completely different than what I'm teaching, don't ask it because it's probably not going to get answered. And I don't feel like explaining myself to you. Deal? Yeah, don't like that guy was like back and back to back to back to back. So it's just like annoying as hell. So fair enough. Cool. All right, let's continue. So now that we understand a little bit more of some tricks in the face, let's uh, draw a couple faces so that you guys understand how to cement that in stone. And let's draw a couple from like profile, some front views, some side views, and we'll like explain how things rotate. Okay. So let's start with one from a three quarter view, because that's going to be the most consistent view that we normally do. By drawing a guideline at the three-quarter line, so slightly off-center, we give ourselves a midline for this element going around. If we draw a circle as the guideline, as, but we only focus on the front, we also get the spine. So we already know where the back of my head is going to be. That is going to connect to my rib cage. that is kind of like an egg with a little circle. At the top, that little circle has a compass, and that compass is gonna be my outside edges of my arm. That's gonna have volume inside, and you're gonna generate your body like that. Okay, so once you find your spine, you can find a lot of the rest of your body because your spine controls everything. So you gotta learn how to place your spine, it connects to the back of your body too. So from here, the easiest way to start drawing your heads is not to draw the little line underneath, okay? No, 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 no. Start by drawing not your jaw, but your eyes and your nose. Don't focus on your mouth area. Focus on these two sections right here, okay? Focus on your nose that you can draw at the top of that little circle, and focus on your eye sockets that can come out of that circle. Okay? This is going to be the side of your face because that's where your eyebrow is going to land. And then you can worry about your jaw. Only after you find all the other elements, worry about your jaw. Because your mouth 
is not always going to be there. You might, you might want to have a mouth that's open a lot. Okay, so why would you relegate yourself to try to fit a yelling mouth within this space when you need more space to be able to do that? So that's why I never draw the entirety of my head. I just draw the connecting points. So when I'm drawing, I draw a circle. I draw a triangle at the edge of my circle. And I follow that to create my eye socket and the side of my face. So in like two seconds, I have a whole human skeleton. From there, that triangle is going to be my in and my out for my nose. This is going to be my mouth space. And this is going to be the space for my eye, which at the middle of that little dent, that is the middle of my eyeball. And then my eye sockets, my my eyebrows and my eyeballs go around that. So it doesn't matter what shape, size I'm drawing my character. Wherever my eye is, that's going to be where my nose and my eyebrows break. So that's another landmark that you guys can use. This plays a role when you're drawing in three quarters because that little dent is right here. But it also represents itself in the form of your cheekbone. So you have your eye. And then the eye, if you go around it, you can draw your eye socket, right? But then if you go around it and you meet up with it again like a butterfly, that gives you your eyebrow and your cheekbone. Which give you that little dent. So let's do that again. We draw our eye. Okay. We draw around our eye to create our eye socket. And then we go butterfly to the middle of the eye. And then we have ourselves that little dent. From there to your chin, it's a straight line. And then you have your jaw outside of that. If you draw the triangle initially, it gives you pretty intuitive guidelines going up and then going down as well. And that's where you draw your nose and your mouth. Again, the side of your eyebrow is going to be the side of your face. And half of this is going to give you your ear. So all these videos are normally uploaded to YouTube a couple days after. uh, Just to give you guys more content. Again, bottom of the ear to my chin is my jaw. This... This is very, (laughs) let me explain what this is because you guys are probably confused as hell sometimes. So this area right here, okay, this is your cheekbone, your temple, and your teeth go over here, okay? Most of that is going to be towards the front of your face. Your jaw just happens to be the thickness of which your muscles are right here. This is your bone. And you have the teeth, your molars and your front teeth are what get controlled by your jaw. Right? All that, all the muscles that move your jaw back and forth, they connect to your temples and stuff. But most of your teeth are the reason why your jaw structure is there it is. You have your molars and you have your front teeth. And then it goes up onto the muscles. So you have to account for that. So whenever you're drawing this, remember that you have to have your teeth, your molars, and some sort of muscle structure that leads to your ear. And that accounts for the spacing in there. Okay, so that is how you start learning how to separate uh, places. Like, for example, when you learn to draw a face, right? 
you learn really quickly that your eyes aren't connected, right? And you have a nose and you have a mouth. So you learn really quickly that your eyes are not supposed to be connected because there's something weird and like that doesn't happen. So intuitively, you start drawing a little bit more space. Maybe you don't understand why, but you're drawing space for your nose bridge. Same thing's going to happen if you take time to study where the mouth goes in accordance to the lips. You'll see that it's kind of like a little fan. It's just like a little fan coming from the edges of your mouth, of your nose. So if you find your nose, draw a little fan that goes out and then just close it. And you have yourself a nice little mouth. The distance between here and here is going to be very significantly like different depending on the styling that you want to achieve. Okay, But that little fan from the edge of your nose essentially gives you your mouth space. So you draw your nose, draw a little fan, and then just close it. If you want to learn to be a little bit more creative with it, you just have to learn how overlapping lines work. All in pen, absolutely. Yeah, no, I just can't believe it's that easy to map everything out. It's, it's easy when you learn properly. When, when you learn from a proper teacher that actually wants to teach you, it becomes relatively easy because you're not really going to be, uh, you're not going to be bullshitted around. Right? That is essentially how your body part works. So with that being said, that is going to be the end of our stream here. I'm going to go on to YouTube in a little bit, about like 30 minutes or so. And that is going to be where if anybody wants to come and like ask specific questions, if you guys want, that's where I take uh, requests, kind of like a piano bar. You know, like you request something, if you donate like a dollar, you donate like two dollars or something like that, then I go in and I answer your question and then we just fill up a whole page like that. And that is uh, something that I'm going to do so that I can facilitate funding the things that I want to do, like my publishing of my books and everything like that. So if you guys want to come support in a more direct way, like, you know, donations and you guys want to learn more direct as well, come over to my YouTube in about like 30 minutes to like an hour. And then you guys can ask things. I'll be there for about an hour or so, filling up another page of sketchbooks. I'm going to be drawing faces as well, taking requests for anything that you guys want to learn from the face. And I will see you guys then. Thank you so much for being my drawing buddies. You guys are amazing. And hopefully TikTok doesn't get banned. So if you guys have representatives that you guys can talk to in your area, make sure that you guys let them know that you guys are not very happy with this. That's the only way that you guys are ever going to be able to keep on having us the way that you have us right now, right? We have to stand up for what we need and what we want to have in our lives and not taken away from us. And that is just something that I'm not a very political person, but uh, it's getting to the point where they're invading into our like, rights much more than they should. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to end up being really bad for people down the line. If they take away all our methods of communicating, like Twitter is already destroyed, right? Like X is garbage. Um, they're trying to remove this and they're trying to control every other method. So at one point we won't have a way to communicate between each other. So we have to make sure that we are actively looking out for each other and one of us, you know, because they're not. But anyways... You guys have a lovely day. You guys kick some butt. I will see you guys in about 30 minutes to an hour for another little stream on YouTube. And I will post this video on YouTube as soon as I can, which probably will be about the 10th or the 11th of the month because we have a video for every day till then. So it's just backlog. But I'll see you guys later. Later, Gators.